All I need is this. And I have what's more gold, so. What is that? I'm gonna just do a little quick little podcast live. Yep. See you later. It's hot. Shit. You ready? You got a mask on. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna just just real quick. Put it on. Put side line. Put it down. Yep. Okay. My side. So you got side. You said niggas putting their mask on. Oh, that movie Tinder came out. Look, see that. Just for a second, it's hot as shit. Black James Bond. You ready to hit record? Mm-hmm. I didn't get the record over there. Three, two, one. <clears throat> oh, man. What episode is this? 134. Maybe 135, maybe. Shit, that's no, not this one. Yeah, 134. Uh, last week we missed. Missed last week. Oh, yeah, I was at work this week. Uh, yeah, it is 134. That's great. Welcome back to another episode of the Podcast and Chill Show. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, all our uh, podcast platforms, including Spotify, the new KKK, um, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud. As, as always, give us five stars. All that good shit. Leave a rating review. Follow me on Instagram if you want. The dog DFI guy. It's in, our, it's in uh, the podcast bio on Instagram. You can go click that. Thank you. Peace. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, I know my voice may sound a little muffled, but it's because I have on the official Pod and Chill Show face mask. You know, COVID is unfortunately never going away because, you know, our government doesn't give a fuck about your well being. So, because of that, we took the liberty of making Pod and Chill Show style masks. And the reason I have it on right now is because now, on episode 134, we're officially starting full video clips. We're adding it to the YouTube, we're adding it to the Instagram. We're here, we're ready, and we face masked up. So, enough of this face mask stuff. Uh, shout out to. Nice promotion. Yeah, nice promotion. Oh, you like $9? Dollars, it's alright, it's alright. Just, um, I'll send you an invoice. Uh, shout out to. Uh, what is it? Uh, screen prints, free prints. Shout mm-hmm. out to free prints. Uh, they have great, 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 great products. You can make whatever you want on free prints. You can put your, you know, a picture of your girlfriend's butt on a mask, and uh, yeah. it'll, yeah, it'll print it out. You can do any type of thing you want, and you know, it works. But I'm your man Finesse Belly. I'm not sweaty today because I changed my clothes before I came here. Mm-hmm. So this is the first episode in like 15 years that I'm not sweaty. But uh, yeah, we're here. We have a new setup. We're ready to rock and roll, man. We got a lot of good stuff to talk about today. We missed a week. Uh, I'm sorry, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we're we're adults. You know, uh, we're live, we're direct. You know, sometimes businesses come up, situations come up, but you know, we're gonna keep bringing y'all that content that y'all love to hate, all right. It's me, uh, last but certainly not least, uh, Duff No Bear. You can follow me on Twitter at not Duff No Bear on Instagram, at Duff No Bear. Shout out to everybody that's currently listening. To the podcast right now and on any streaming platform you choose to listen to shout out to all of our supporters and supporters thus far we appreciate every single one of y'all um if you listen to this on spotify make sure you subscribe if you listen to this on apple Podcasts, make sure you give us a rate and review make sure you subscribe if you want a newsletter dm us your email and we can put it on your newsletter and you can get weekly updates on the podcast and what we're doing shout out to everybody that's potentially listening and watching this on youtube right now because we are being recorded right now, and I'm very camera shy, but I'm going to still talk my shit regardless. Camera shy. Episode 135. I mean, four. Episode 134 of the Podcast and Show Show. Last week we missed. My birthday was last week. Oh, Clap it up for Duff Nobody's birthday. Clap it up. Clap it up. We had a mixer. We don't know how to work yet. We're older. We're older yeah, guys. We so mixers. We'll get the applause button next week. So Some y'all going to college to learn how to do mix audio and shit, but yeah. we're going to learn it free off of YouTube. Yes, sir. Shout out to, uh, you know, college. And also, you know, with, due, due to the fact that, you know, we have video footage now, um, for anybody out there who's listening who has any type of brand, any type of, you know, photography, clothing, product, if you want to feature it on our show, listen, we get a lot of listens. We have a lot of ratings on, you know, Apple Podcasts. If you guys want your stuff on the show, all you have to do is just DM us. We're giving away free merch coming very soon. All right, so we just have to wait for that to be shipped in. Again, though, if you want your stuff featured on the podcast and show show, all it takes is a simple direct message. 
I'll come pick it up if you need me to pick it up. You can send it to this podcast studio, and we're here, we're ready, and we're ready for more content, man. Let's get it cracking, boy. Let's get it. 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 I love it. Shout out to Dom, Dom Sharp, a uh, local podcaster. Uh, he's in there live right now. Shout out to Dom Sharp. But yeah, man, let's get right to it. Our king, Black Panther, famous actor, Chadwick Boseman, passed away a couple mm. days ago. Uh, what mm. was it, August 29th, I believe? Mm-hmm. Yeah, August 29th. I got home. Every time somebody died, Doc No Bear me up. He breaks the news to me. I never find it out on myself. Like, but it, it seems like it, it, it's never like true. But then you go searching on the internet, and you know, sadly things turn out the way you don't want it to be. So Chadwick Boseman, he's 42 or 43 years old. Passed away from colon cancer. No one knew that he even suffered. He was suffering from this Since for the past four yeah. for the past four years. Yeah, he was recording so many movies. Um, Black Panther. It, the production was already done, but that shit came out. Black Panther, Twenty One Bridges, Avengers Endgame, Avengers Infinity War. He had another movie. I forgot what the name was called, but yeah, he was just struggling in silence, and it just came out today what he was struggling from. A lot of people speculated that it was from uh, he had a movie role and he was losing weight purposely. People saying he was doing crack. Yeah, he's making. They called him the Crack Panther. Yeah. But now that that looks terrible in hindsight. Yeah, it does. I thought he was doing. Um, I thought he was doing a movie role, but then like. After two years, you're not going to be losing that much weight. So then, like, damn, something's something's going on. And that's not even healthy to be losing that much weight for, like, a couple of years. Maybe a couple months you can do it. Like, 50 Cent did it. He gained his weight back. Uh, the old Batman did it. But you're not going to be losing weight that much weight for years. So, yeah. He was just struggling with that and still, still producing films. Strong man. Strong, strong, strong will. Yeah, we, you know... 2020 has been crazy, as we already know. Uh, we don't have to keep revisiting that. We we living in it right now. So yeah. when we when we look back five, ten years from now, we're gonna be like, damn, uh, it was just so much. And you know, it was yeah. so much bad stuff that happened. You know, so far you you for you tend to forget all it's the stuff be, yeah, that's happened. It's gonna be some memories that stick with you forever. Yeah, we're always gonna remember where we were when Kobe died. Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant. And, and it's like you know, people are coming out the woodwork saying, you know mm-hmm. how. Chadwick Boseman really did something for us, especially the black community, man, being the face yes. of, you know... One of the biggest Marvel movies ever. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Grossing, yeah. the highest grossing movie. Yeah. The biggest, like, black, uh, well, prominent black superhero put on screen. Now, you can't, you can't never take that away from him, regardless of... And the fact that he's been in stellar movies, such as, you know, Jackie Robinson's movie, 42... You know, the movie, uh, what is it, 21 Bridges? 21 Bridges. 21 Bridges, you know. I don't watch James a lot of Brown. movies like that. James, James Brown. Brown. Yeah. James Brown. He portrayed a lot of like famous uh, black people. Uh, what was his name? The, the judge, the Supreme Court judge, I think. Was that? Not Thurgood Marshall, is it? Yeah, that was him. He, he portrayed him, I believe. Okay. So, yeah, he, he, did a, he had a wide range, like just different people. Yeah, he, he would be truly missed, man. And the fact that, you know... People, uh, the first thing people are talking about is, uh, what about Black Panther 2? First of all, this man just died. Mm-hmm. All right, and like, I understand, you know, with social media, people don't understand, you know, the concept of death anymore. They just see it and it's like, oh, sad. Mm-hmm. Like, people are mourning right now, and you have no right to sit here and worry about Black Panther 2. What you should do is, you should appreciate the fact that we just lost a king. Yeah. A king. A prominent black figure to the black community. Chadwick Boseman. He was on his way too, like yeah, just getting started. Really, his biggest movie was what four years ago, so he's still on his yeah. way, creating more. Um, he wasn't even into his like fifties and sixties, just like how like Denzel is. Um, Black Panther two. I'm sad that we won't get to see him in Black Panther two, but I'm not like really speculating who's going to be the next Black Panther. Mm-hmm. How are they going to flip this? How are they are they going to make Shuri the new Black Panther? I'm not really really worried about that. I'm just sad that we're not going to see him in uh, future Marvel yeah, films. True. I mean. Yeah. Or any other films. Yeah, great actor. Yeah. yeah. But um, backtracking to what you guys were talking about just like a little bit earlier. Yeah, 2020 is going to be like, where were you during 2020? Yeah, yeah. A hundred tragedies, so many losses. We, we took so many losses this year. And uh, people on social media go like, um, hey, this can't get any worse. And then guess what? It gets it worse every single mm-hmm. time. I can't. It's, it was so many tragedies. It's, it's more than a handful. Maybe it's we more than two handfuls. And, and we had to sit home to watch it because the majority of us were unemployed due to COVID-19. Yeah, so, I would say, like, COVID is, like, the... The wake-up. The, 
It's to like me. and again, my lifetime is the biggest like world changing event. Yeah. Like that where we're living through it. Mm-hmm. Um I can nine I mean, eleven you can put up there, but we were still young. But yeah, COVID is just like one of the worst things to happen. And it's just started off in twenty twenty, that's crazy. Went twenty nineteen. Nine eleven was a different type of tragedy. Yeah. It affected it changed, us. it changed the world and it changed the system. It didn't, COVID is changing the way we live. Yeah, it shut things down. Yeah. And, and made uncertainty for our future of how we're gonna socialize like from other people. From social distancing to the educational system, everything to the stock market, to the economy, to how we work, to social how we live, social, to how we eat. Yeah, social interactions. Everything is different. You don't communicate anymore the same way we would January first, twenty twenty. Nope. You communicate differently. Everybody, like, if you make a call, they, they see you as a terrorist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's times like you hold your cough in because yeah. you don't want to look like that. It's like, it's that crazy. That has a you know sickness. No concerts. It's, people not taking public transportation anymore. It's getting to a point where, like you say, even if you hear somebody call for sneeze, you think they're just like patient zero yeah. for COVID. Like you get you get news media that that perpetuates these false numbers to have people running around in mass hysteria, fear mongering, fear mongering. Like and mind you, we're in the middle of a, of an election that's gonna shift like the way we look at the next four years of our country. Yeah. It's, it's, so it's brand new when you think about it. Everything will be brand new on how they tackle certain subjects. So it has to be, mm-hmm. and and in psychology, how it's working now. Like they need to do like brand new studies in a few years about human behavior because it's changing drastically. You know what I mean? It's a big change. Yeah, it's gonna be, people gonna do studies in, in like decades from now or something. It'd be crazy to see how it changed the human brain. But, These social interactions we've been going through. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna need some more time. You know? So that we're back on it. I forget what life was like before COVID. But um Me too. If you guys ever have Snapchat. What happened with Snapchat? Like Oh yeah, people were doing it like uh this was me January first, right before they announced COVID and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So that's big on social media right now. Bro, yesterday I had my memory from last year around just at this time, I was sitting in like a mosh pit of like two hundred people yeah, just was- jumping up to play, listen to Mo Bamba. Probably will never happen. Everybody breathing on your back. And you yeah. look at that now like, yo, what the hell was I doing? You taking air for granted, yeah. Nobody got a mask on? Taking space for granted. Yeah. Like, even air, like, it's just wild. Things are just going to be different. Um, but yeah, shout out, I mean, rest in peace to uh, Chadwick Boseman. Rest in peace. He went out on top. Nothing to be ashamed about for uh, his career. Um, before he died, he donated, like, millions of dollars to charity. You know, was a you know, he was a figure for for kids with cancer. The um, they looked up to him, and we just didn't even know. And then that's another thing with uh people. I learned this in high school when you have something called an emotional backpack. Now I know, I know that may sound a little bit superficial, but you never know what somebody's going through. So before you scoff and you make jokes and you heckle and you do this online or whatever to get clout because you know nobody you're not gonna you would dare say that to somebody's face in the street no. you should really watch what you say and watch what you do because you don't know how that affects someone you see how people deal with stuff not everybody posts their whole life on social media so you can know step by step by step what they're mm-hmm. doing so it's important to realize hey this guy may be on his way on his deathbed but i want to make a fucking joke about something watch yourself filter what you say because you never know who's hurting out there yeah yeah, and especially like as a celebrity, he, um, he held that all in. He didn't post anything on social media. I guess a bunch of celebrities that would have like, he, they would have uh, sought out a pity card or something to um, get people to feel sad for them. But he, you know, he didn't even care. He kept it between him and his family. And, you know, went out like a champion. Rest in peace to God, like Chadwick Boseman. Rest in peace. I'm a. I gotta rewatch Black Panther now. Yeah, yeah, me too. All of his work. I never got to see Twenty One Bridges in theaters, but I'll, I'll probably check it out on. Um, on YouTube or something, buy it. Um, damn, man, 2020. You gotta hate it. Three months left, though. Hopefully nothing really else big happens. Flu season. You, that's yeah. a whole nother scary deadlier thing we don't know. Than, yeah, deadlier than COVID, so it might be combined with that. COVID flu. Yeah. Imagine getting COVID and h one n Influenza. Influenza-COVID-19. I really don't want another nine months of fucking quarantine bro. they about to tag team off the rope shit immune system the hardy brothers <laughs> covid least... and influenza 
<laughs> Team Dog. Extreme. <laughs> Team Extreme. Yeah, I don't want another nine months of quarantine. At least they can um do limits of like indoor places. Please. Don't you can't. Shut, I don't want everything shut down again. You can't. It's hard. The whole economy will have to change like we previously said because we discussed this like outside of podcast and like on a personal level, like these restaurants have certain standards and they have certain like capacities. Mm-hmm. If you have like twenty five people a day, that's uh, if you have 25 people in your restaurant, yeah, then you're going to have literally almost the same amount of uh, volume every day. So you're going to make around the same amount of money a day, and that's not good. Yeah, it's no it's no room to go up. Yeah, the only thing it's is, a ceiling. You, yeah. It's exactly, it's a ceiling, and the only thing you can do is either meet that goal or you always underperform. You won't surpass it because nope. there's limitations nope. to your company now. Yeah, restaurants. There's, there's no way they can make profits unless they um they like triple the prices of their tortillas. Mm. But like, <laughs> that's the only way. A restaurant like, restaurant like a. At least like a hundred people inside. That's mm-hmm. not going to be. It's not possible. It's going to be like what one fourth of that. Mm-hmm. So like, I mean, seventy five percent less. So like twenty five people. No way you can make money off of that. And there's people so, yeah. out there that's not even paying attention to COVID. Like we have uh, sports stadiums said that during, like, especially for the NFL teams, they said they're going to actually reopen it, but they're just going to have it at 50, like 25% capacity. If mm-hmm. your stadium holds almost 40,000 people, 25% capacity is still too many people. Still it's in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah, yeah it's still a lot. They're going to have to, like, it's in the thousands still. They're going to do, like, temperature checks on all of them. Yeah, and temperature checks really doesn't do anything. Asymptomatic. It's not even, no, it's, asymptomatic is rare, but still, you don't know if, like, the person is, the fever is not a part of that specific person's, uh, you know, case. And people are just going to rush to their, um, their front row seats anyway. I don't know if you can, because uh, if it's spaced out, there's going to be a lot of empty seats. Mm-hmm. People are just going to go closer. Um, MLB, they're doing something different. They're charging $100 so you can submit a photo, and they're going to put it in the stands for you. So you can be like one of the virtual fans. That's stupid. It's basically like them t- selling tickets, but it's just gonna be your photo. Yeah. Like nobody's really checking to see if your photo. Is I'm good. really not. I'm not looking. The oh, there's uh, there's Phil. <laughs> <laughs> there's Bob from marketing over there. Oh, Derek. Bro, three B. Seventy thousand photos. Like it's just gonna look like paper and yeah. then, you know at a, at a point. You guys paying a hundred dollars so, for one photo? They're just looking for ways to make money. Because like a, a majority of what you know sports teams make per year is from the stands. Yeah, merchandise for fans. Yep, yeah. that's a lot of money, right? Yeah, there. what forty thousand times, like a thousand dollar ticket, sixteen times a year, plus the playoffs. So playoffs they gotta, they gotta, expensive. They gotta, they gotta I know. I don't mm. know, man. I don't really know because I, what what the the issue is that we're fighting something we have no idea how to combat. So for these people out here, I understand that you guys have you know. You guys have to pay your light bill. You get what I'm saying? Like you guys have to keep the lights on too. But it's you guys have to understand that you're trying to create a solution for a problem that, that you don't, don't know how know. to fix. Yeah. yeah, we don't know how to fix it. Um, just like we we discussed this million a million times, like with um uh, event two hundred one. Remember we discussed that with the uh, foundation. Yep. Mm-hmm. Who, who foundation was it? That was uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation yeah. that came out with it on October with 24th yeah. with John Hopkins University. If you yeah. don't know what that is, check it out. Uh, basically, what it was is uh, Event 201 was a test run, basically with... Oh, future pandemic. And this was in December. A future pandemic. So, it, it, right now. And mm-hmm. they predicted everything. It predicted literally every single thing that happened and conspiracy theorists believe that they were doing it that this whole quarantine when we first was on lockdown was like this final stage of a test run to see if what would happen if we actually needed to face a serious uh lockdown yeah but um again it, it you don't know yeah but bill gates man he's uh he's making a tour of i told you so to people right now yeah that's what he's currently doing as he should as he should because he did warn people literally a month before everything happened, which is very um, That's too short coincidental, <laughs> which is very coincidental. Yeah. I'm not a conspiracy. Th- I like conspiracy theorists, but I'm not a conspiracy yeah, theorist. Started COVID. Yeah. <laughs> so as soon as COVID, yeah, he eventually won, and they had like um, solutions of how they can uh, get rid of the virus and everything like that. And they're proposing like. Um, they're proposing like a cure right now, a vaccine, right? Yeah, there is. There's a couple companies uh, that's trying to make a vaccine. They um, have companies called Novavax, uh, Pfizer, uh, Vaxart, 
and a couple other car companies in Russia that I don't necessarily know the name for. They are um, starting to try to um, create a vaccine for it. I know Donald Trump sent over, I believe, three billion dollars to Novavax. You guys can, you guys can uh, fact, check. fact check yeah. if you want. But they, it, it's called like Operation Lightspeed. That's the name of it. Now, I don't know the number is in the billions, but you guys can fact check. That's what you're there for. Um, and basically to speed up the process, but again, it takes years for, yeah. And you're trying to rush the process and we need to see what's inside of this vaccine. Cause I'm quite curious. And you have to have clinical trials of the vaccine. Yeah. You can't just say, Oh, I made it. Mm -hmm. Let's go give it to people. Well, we and the next thing you know, I mean, it's, it's going to be tested. Your fucking head explodes. It's going to be a lot of dummies testing it. Yeah. Which is uh, test on a, on a rabbit first. Yeah. Then you progress your way to like, a rat. But that's going to take what, like a year. Yeah. Cause you got to see the long-term effects of the rat or the rabbit they're using mm -hmm. and they use rats because y'all said we, we have the same immune system as the rat or the closest to it trump administration said that uh we would have a vaccine ready by november my dude it's about it's september yeah and we that's didn't not, even get not the taking, clinical trials i'm not taking a vaccine yeah that's going to be that's good. coming this <laughs> that's coming that's going to melt your skin yeah it's going probably going to do worse than what COVID can do to you thank you the, the, the simpsons vaccine. character that's what vaccine fucks up. Yeah, three hours fish. Jeez. Oh, man, I got radioactive powers now. How do I get Lyme disease? Thanks, Trump. Mm. Oh, man. Vaccine. I'm not really going to take a vaccine because I'm not really that worried of getting it. When the last time you guys took a vaccine, if you mind me asking? I had to. When I was born. For your job. Yeah, for my job and for college. Yeah. I take tetanus shots and all that. I, I mean, I'm talking about influenza. Oh, yeah. I never school. got flu shots. Never. never had the flu or nothing. I, I, don't, I don't really get sick, but I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to get a tetanus shot for, for school. Yeah. But other than that, I'm, you know, I'm, I'd have to like got shots for that. I caught the flu when I was a freshman in college. Mm. It, I have never felt so bad that in my good. life. I was sick for like four days. Mm -hmm. Like that's your kill. It kills people. That flu, yeah, man. Your immune system has been compromised. Yeah, if you're a weaker old person. Yeah, high chance of and it bounced from me to my roommate to my friend to my other friend. It's really one after one person got healed, somebody else got it, and it yeah. just bounced, bounced, bounced. That's why opening schools is like you can't really do it. Yeah, COVID can it can be the same way. It was spread that fast. It was a, it was going to be a double edged sword. Either way we looked at it for America and yep. the education system, you you damned if you do, you damned if you don't. Mm -hmm. If you take the kids to school, it's potential. It's a strong chance they might get sick and pass it to a classmate. Mm -hmm. If you don't do it, they miss a whole year and everybody gets backed mm -hmm. up and everybody loses money in the school system. So it's damned I mean, if you do. Yeah, both sides them. got both sides got good arguments. Mm -hmm. It's not like one definitive side that's going to be right. I don't know which side I lean on more. I would rather them learn, get an education, but like maybe like online a six-year-old kid already died from COVID-19 yeah. coming from school so you guys really have to I mean according to Dr. Oz he said that you know oh we fucked Dr. Oz according to Dr. Oz it, there's a margin of error if you know if out of all the kids two million die that's two percent so that's a margin oh, yeah, of error that he's willing to take so this is the people that you know and his kid's not even going to school. They got private shit. Exactly. Day. Google not going back to work. None of the employees going back to the summer of 2021. So what does that tell you? If a company of that stature is not sending their employees back, what does that tell you? Why would you send your kids? Number one, you're not sending college kids back who have the opportunity and the free will and the mindset to at least think children. for themselves. You're sending children with the attention spans of a pack of nickels to have, keep a mask on in a classroom that's six, seven, eight, nine years old and still expect them to learn proficiently. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. I don't know. Like we said, kids something we're going to have something we're going to look back on in the future as well to see if it worked out. See if they actually um if they actually learned how much they didn't learn, how many cases, you know, the students caught. Cause like if, if you if you start school back, they're gonna there's gonna be uh, kids out there that get it. It's not gonna be like hundred percent of the population doesn't get it. So like if one kid is enough to like shut that shit down. So and spread be, it to to the teacher. Teacher spread it to her uh, friends, or you know yeah, like we always say, they spread it to another kid. The kid gives it to mom. Yeah, teacher goes on to their kid. It's a big their kid goes yeah. to school. It's like it's a big chain reaction. 
And it's a possibility. It's, it's one of the trickiest situations. Yeah. I would hate to be a president right now. I would hate to be a parent right now. Yeah. Because you, because nothing. I don't have kids in my household. That's all I know. I'm, I'm, good. I'm good at teaching them at home. Fuck it. Nah, because apparently I was talking to a lady today who was saying, I'm just so scared of sending my kids back because I can't take them out because they'll, I'll go to jail for truancy. Mm. So it's like you're forcing the hand of a parent to put their kid and their family at risk, at risk for yeah. COVID. To pay your students and your faculty, to pay your uh, professors yeah, they, and your faculty. They got the option to do online schools if you want to, but parents are not going to be home, you know, all day. And you can't trust your kid to be being that proactive for, what, eight hours a day or something mm-hmm. like that on, in front of a computer, and it's not healthy it's for not. the mind to stare at the screen for that long. It's not. If you have, a, like, a small recess, what is, what is recess, 30 minutes? You get 30 some, minutes. Th- you get a little 30-minute grace period. Come back and you stare at the screen for another what, four, five, I don't know, four hours. And it's not one on one teaching. Yeah. Well. Is it lunch? Then you have recess, so you get an hour, yeah. and that's only really that breaks only for the teachers. It's not really for the kids. Yeah. yeah. That break is for the teachers. And yeah, I mean, it's just a catch twenty two, man. Like especially when you having these kids in the classrooms, like how are they supposed to learn when they're fit? kids aren't hygienic? Yeah. They don't know hygiene. No, that's why we dress them up. That's why we lace their shoes. That's why we brush their teeth. That's and wipe their ass. And wipe their ass, exactly. So you're in the middle of a pandemic where we have to be socially distant. How are you going to explain to a six-year-old what social, being socially distant is? Yeah, especially if they see their friends. Most kids are hyperactive. Yeah. Most kids don't have self-control. So what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. So it's just like so many risks that out, outweigh the potential reward. Of There's the no reward. I mean, the hybrid thing was pretty smart that they implemented. The hybrid learning, how like certain kids go to Sonata the day, then you switch it to the next kid to go to A and B schedules. Group. Yeah, A and B schedules. That's a, but it's still a lot of kids. Either way you look at it, it's a potential risk that that kid can come home with it. Yeah. Either way. Yeah, my main worry is like, when is he going to end though? Like. It could be on. It could be like five years from now. Still, the same thing happens. Well, like I said previously, if we give the government power, which we have gave the government power, then they could prolong this as how long they wanted to go. But it was that was a damn if you do, damn if you don't situation too, because you want to have not faith in the government, but you you expect the government to do what they're supposed to be doing. But on the other hand, you don't give them too much trust because they can, and once you give them power, they can just take control. And that's what they've been doing with the media, with fear mongering. So they'll keep you at home. Hey, yeah, unemployment is this low, but you don't want to go outside because you know you can catch COVID. Wear your mask because you can get it. It's not. There's no truth in the media. It just it's about, zero truth. It's about media. ratings and money. So as long as the government is control, I don't know how to. I don't. I don't really know. I don't know what true liberation is. <laughs> not here. Not not during this pandemic. I don't yeah. know. What tr- I don't know how to gain true liberation. This know? this pandemic showed um, just how in the dark we as citizens are. Yeah. But you have to also understand something. Is I'm mean, use is or are are the American people capable of understanding complex situations without the causing country. a riot? No. Not for the mass majority. It's a lot of sheep in America. You got to remember that. Yeah. Explain that. Um, so basically, that's the reason why we put a lot of faith in the government right now. Because a lot of people are, I'm not going to say oppressed, but they're taught that they are oppressed. And I'm talking about for all of us, not just black people. We're all basically like, you know, the nine to five lifestyle schedule. So we have the government to look forward to. We have trust in the government. A lot of people have more faith in the government than they should have because they're taught that. They're not really sold the American dream. Like us three, we know what we want out of life, but a lot of people are comfortable with a, like a regular schedule. So they have more trust in the government. Uh, they don't want to be like a, a outcast, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's how I feel about it. So uh, since they have more trust in the government, the government can do whatever they want. What do you think? It's more sheep. Well, yeah, I agree. People just find it safe. Well, it's more comfortable to have something to rely on. Mm-hmm. I guess the government is reliable, I would say, in terms of uh, providing things to, to survive. Um, you said 
freaking out like in rioting. Yeah, because you, as we've seen, you know, like just based off of this, just the, the small tidbits of information that the government just sprinkles over our yeah, food. People would call it like, like, like fair mongering. Yeah. In the media. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the masses will always like overreact to things that they hear in the media. Mm-hmm. Um, there was one one case back in the day. Somebody said the aliens are coming on the radio. And people went wild. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's a, that's really a big thing in the human mind. Toilet paper. Oh yeah, the toilet paper. Do you remember toilet paper? Literally a few months ago, toilet no. paper. They're working at Walmart. People rip it right off. The toilet toilet paper. Up. People were fighting people, over toilet paper. People thought they were gonna die. That was, that was like the instant period. So they took all the toilet paper, and there was limitations to how many pieces of toilet paper or yeah. packs you can get. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? I do remember that. I was in BJ shopping. Yeah. It was big ass packs of toilet paper, and it said it's only one per family. Yep, one per family. One per family. And they had signs everywhere. Do you know how much toilet paper can be made in the world? Why is this limited right now? Yep. It was no reason. So that's how I know there's a lot of sheep and a lot of people rely on the government more than they should. I mean, I rely on it too for certain things, but I'm so efficient even if something something is something as simple as water yeah you know why why do we and i know that may sound superficial and it may sound like extremely like preachy it's against capitalism yeah 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 uh it's companies that want to buy it so (laughs) why do we pay for water yeah you know simple simple just simple questions like that you know if we're made of what like 60 percent water Mm -hmm. why the hell are we paying for something that we're made of you get what i'm saying but these are questions that you know Again, sound a bit superficial, but it's only superficial because the government makes you think that it's not okay to think that way. Yeah. Like, you know, like, so you, but you pay for drinking water, like water utility, free housing shit. It should be like, it should be free. It's natural. I think everything. Because you can't access drinking water everywhere. Yeah. So they. Can they provide yeah. it for you all over the world? I mean, you can. You have to just filter it yourself. Yeah, not many. Yeah, like, people aren't doing. That's it. what I'm saying. They rely on everything it's else. Easier, yeah. The government wipes their ass. Yeah, there's yeah. no springs in Philadelphia, yeah. so we got to get something shipped to us. Even in terms of unemployment, like I know dudes that literally said, "Oh, I'm about to. People are getting unemployment. I'm quitting my job mm-hmm. just to well, you know." Get fired. So yeah, they do something to get fired. Yeah, yeah. do but something yeah, to get yeah. fired. That's crazy. I couldn't do that. Uh. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Strange times. It's very strange, strange times. Strange times. And the government gives people one up. You know, finally, finally, the government slips up and gives people the the ability to, you know, get masses of thousands of thousands of dollars with these quote unquote PUA scams. And what do people do with the money? Just put it back into the economy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what people who been would have predicted that with the uh, thousand dollars a month plan. Just go right back to you do nothing with it. You don't really like invest it into yourself. Now, mind you, again, you guys can fact check me on this. The poverty line in this country only takes about a hundred billion dollars to fix. Less than a hundred billion dollars. President Donald Trump gave away two point one trillion dollars during the pandemic to stimulus checks and other type of funds. So that means, in general, in theory, he could have cured the poverty line. In this country, over ten different times. But it started with you. You, as the American, you as an American citizen, it started with you. You had the chance to flip it, but you threw it back in the economy. I'm not counting pockets. I'm just saying. Am I disappointed? Slightly. I'm extremely disappointed. I know you had. We I'm had. extremely disappointed. You could have flipped the money various ways. You can't be mad because your grandma out there getting robbed <laughs> and smacked upside the head with a Glock 49 or whatever, whatever, simply because you thought that, oh, this $12,000 I just scammed the government for, that's not going to help anything in my neighborhood. I need this for me. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go buy some shoes because that's what's really going to help me in life. Some shoes. Oh, I'm going to go buy this jacket. I'm going to go buy some shit that I'm not going to fucking need in a couple of months. But the issue is, all right, if you and three of your homies would have did that scam and got 40000 30000 whatever money, you guys could have bought a 
a house Anything. during the pandemic and only put down 3000 so you would have only had to put down like four racks and could have made your own money and start buying your hood back. But you guys are so stupid and so idiotic. You guys don't know how to manage money and you never had no money. So when you get five figures in your account, you don't know what to do with it. It's crazy. I see it like they gave niggas, well, not just that, all of us, a chance to to chase the American dream, bro. They gave us all a chance. Gave you a chance. Even with the PUA thing, even though it's like illegal, the scams y'all been doing, y'all could have flipped that money. And if the push come to shove, you had to pay that back. Y'all had the money to pay it back, but you were financially free now. Y'all had. They gave y'all chances to. To, to chase the American dream, they gave y'all chances to start your own businesses unintentionally. But a lot of people didn't, like I said, we, they rely on the government, so mm-hmm. they're comfortable with the nine to five lifestyle. They don't let, they don't want to do anything out of comfort. So what they do, they throw the money back in the economy to buy um, a bunch of liabilities, a bunch of clothes. Um, but like I said on Instagram, you should want to have a lot of assets. You, all your assets should have some type of passive income. You shouldn't buy nothing that's not making you no money. And that's the that's what I'm doing now. Everything I'm trying to invest in makes money. I'm not trying to invest in like just clothes. Clothes doesn't make me money. At all. So yeah, it's just well, yeah, um, most things. Americans are like conditioned to buying things. Mm-hmm. We're not really taught to how to save. No. Um instant gratification is a thing as well. They wanna um because like to to save and invest your money is what's that's gonna make you money in five years. People don't have, uh, don't look like they yeah, don't look don't that like far. Um I'm young. But anyway, with me, I went out, I bought a car. Yes, sir. Very so smart. Something to bring in money. That's investment. Yeah, brings in money. I'm going to be like working, uh, driving, driving apps and shit like that. So that's the way to make money. But a lot of people, they, you know, they just don't see the, the full the full picture. And that's it's better to get things, get things instantly. It's smarter for our educational system to teach entrepreneurship or self-sufficiency. The best thing. Or it starts in your neighborhood. Somebody that's well-off can teach y'all about um, entrepreneurship or self-sufficiency. Yeah, I mean, let's keep let's let's keep it whole honest. I right teach now. I teach the kids. Let's be honest. My right job. Now. If you don't see if you don't see little Ray Ray or somebody like that go into that setting and you oh he's cool. Yeah, I'm not gonna he's not gonna want to go in there. You get what I'm saying? Because unfortunately, like you said earlier, a lot of Americans as well as a lot of masses in general, these individuals are sheep. Yeah. Okay, and that's not saying that that's a bad that thing, thing yeah, because condition, not, your condition is yeah. not your fault. Like, if you were born in a box, why would you look outside the box? Mm-hmm. You, you want to know what's you there. Know what's out there. The Literally, like, you have no idea what's out there. So if I'm telling you, hey, you, instead of buying something that you think you need, how about you save something that you actually really need? You get what I'm saying? But I, it's, it's only so much you can say to somebody without them turning their ears off. Yeah. Even now, like somebody probably got offended that I called them stupid because they wasted their money on merchandise that they can't sell or they uh, depreciate as soon as you buy it. So they probably turned this podcast off. I mean, that's all fine and well, but you only turned it off because you hurt. And that guilt is like convicted inside of you. You get what I'm saying? You'll be back. Goofy. Yeah. So that's. Yeah, you just can't give people like a windfall of money because they're just going to spend it. Same thing with winning the lottery. For your first instinct is like to spend it. Hmm. Get your taxes. First instinct is to spend it. I don't know. It just takes a different mindset, you know, to make money off of that. Different type of knowledge. It it takes a different type of knowledge and experience. Flipping your price. It, it depends what you're selling, because uh-huh. it's going to be like a max. Because like like say you start flipping like PlayStation or something, you're going to run out of customers eventually. Uh-huh. So you gotta find the right thing to flip, then like I guess get enough money to start a business or something, or buy something that is, that, as you said, makes you makes you money. But that's something you gotta like actually think about, and the time that it takes to think about that. You could have been spending that money. You know, I'd rather I'm gonna rather spend this money. Yeah. Because you put us my money for two days in our house, the temptation is gonna you know eat away at them. That's why stores put uh, stores they put like um, tempting items at the front of the store. As soon as you walk in, you see it, you want to buy it. Little hand, little hand things, like, oh, a charger. Oh, yeah, this is right here. Yeah. Some chapstick. They call it impulse. Impulse, impulse yep. And that's why if you ever realized when you go to, like, major supermarkets, all the dairy products are always in the far back because 
subconsciously these stores want you to see everything else on the shelves in order for you to get yeah, to the dairy products. They know you're, you're coming to get that shit. That's the most important thing to some most families. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. Yep. And they believe it's crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, if you're making smart. business, that's a smart business tactic. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, man. Next time you get a windfall of money, like, think about what you're going to you know, do with it. Really do with it, yeah. Find a purpose, stick to the purpose, make a business plan, put the money where your mouth is once you... Pay off debt I'm, I'm pretty it. sure a lot of you guys, yeah, yeah pay off your debt. A That's real. That. That's financially freedom as well. A lot of people did that, yeah. Like, you got to understand, like, don't think about what you can buy with the money. Think about what the money can buy you. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I know, that, again, that may sound a little cliche, but, dude, you got to understand numbers. And if you don't understand, it's not hard to ask. You're not stupid because you don't know. You're just, unfortunately, you just don't have the information yet. Mm -hmm. It don't take long to find information, bro. It really doesn't. That's the podcast and show show, man. Uh, yeah, man. Still waiting for that second stimulus check. <laughs> if you ever. I'm flipping that, that too. I'm flipping that. It's not really that, that much to get out of like your current situation, mm -hmm. but you can use it to pay off debt if you want to. Pay pay bills off so you can get a head start on that. But the ten thousand though, um, if you try so hard to scan that ten thousand, you can do something with that ten thousand plus. Yep, and that's that's a lot of money to uh, you know. Mess around and buy a grizzly bear. Yeah, as you said, like like the the dudes y'all hang around with all day in front of like the corner store, y'all can put all that together. You can get like a house, you said. Then you can rent that out. Yeah. And that's going to make you money. They could have bought the corner store. You could have bought the corner store. You could have bought the land under the store. Mm -hmm. But no. Yeah, just rent that house out, make money right there. You money. wanted your sneaks. You wanted your sneaks. Do you? Do you? you. I'm talking to you. Sad. My girl still walked by. That's crazy. Still don't got no <laughs> choice. Yeah. Right here. It's like, where's your car? Oh, I didn't know I needed that. I just want to drip. <laughs> Stupid. Oh, that was a perfect time to get a car. If you, if you know. ah! Come on now. Perfect. Free uh, free $10,000. Could have got a nice car. Yeah, man. I don't, I don't know. I, I can't be responsible for other people's intelligence anymore because you, you you would think that you know people don't every day you wake up you know it's something that you feel like oh people can't get no more crazier and then just when you think it isn't it is mm -hmm. yeah, man. yeah we always out, out to ourselves tell me about as it as humans uh we can move on to the next topic i guess yeah um we got gorillas <laughs> versus bears that's a good uh, subject. this is a, a long-term topic i mean long known long Known topic. This will go down. Long debated. Books. It's not that even, it's not that hard to me though, because if you just look at the statistics on well the um, what's actually called the side by side comparisons. Let's look it up. It's just a bear is like the perfect killing machine. Let's look it up. To Let's me, a, to me, a bear here. is a is a killing machine. A gorilla, they 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 they're basically um, they thrive off of intimidation. They don't really go out to seek and kill things. They go out and fight to have sex with another gorilla. They're not predators. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they, they don't have any type of predator, predator. predatory instinct. You said they don't bite. They don't bite during uh, fighting. They're, I think they're vegetarians. They don't bite during fighting. So if they're fighting a 10-foot big-ass bear running 35 miles per hour. Yeah. All right, I'm going to put like a picture up. Bear, gorilla. Boom. So we're going to vote on it. No, we're going to vote on it. All right, so... A silverback gorilla weighs 500 pounds. Lightweight. That's all. I Stands at 5'11". I'm that height. I'm literally that height. Has a bite force of 1,300 pounds oh. per square inch. Oh, we can cancel that out because it's not going to use its fangs. And has strength of about 409 pounds. What that mean? So that means the that's, amount that's is probably maximum. Yeah, it, 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 it max, yeah, 409 pounds. Ronnie Coleman can lift five pounds like no. Now, a grizzly bear weighs around 900 pounds, mm. stands at 10 feet tall, has a bite force of uh, 1,250 pounds mm. per square inch, okay, and has a strength of 1,102 pounds. So basically, it's, it's been reported that a bear can, like, use his paw to move a boulder or something, a rock that's like, like 800 pounds, just easily, mm -hmm. to look for food and things like that. A bear is the, is the perfect killing machine. Like, it's the perfect predator. Not many things can kill it, but like it's not going to be out fighting a rhinoceros because they don't live in the same habitat. 
So wherever a bear's habitat is, we want to be the top of the food chain. If humans didn't have guns, it would kill every human. So I'm taking the silverback gorilla, uh, simply because it has thumbs. You said it has thumbs. <laughs> you can't um, it's not gonna kill shoot. something that has thumbs. Well, you can't ki you can't kill a gorilla. Our bro. brains are more advanced, so we have ways. A we gorilla. Have, we're smarter than with using our thumbs. Oh my God. A gorilla. They can will, obviously grab them. Will pick up a strap. <laughs> And yeah. blow a bear's head off. Bears can't be, pick up guns. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Bears have se a, a gorilla can theoretically pick up a gun. Yeah. Gorillas have a second in memory right? because they because they're mammals. Sounds a little racist. <laughs> they, no, bear, gorillas have second in memory rights. That is very racist. It's not racist. They don't, they don't have human human rights. But let, let's be real. Let's be ideal here, okay? We're in the jungle right now. We're in the jungle. You got There's a bear in the jungle for some reason. Yeah, it's bear in the jungle. So this motherfucker just came in the woods, or came in so the wait, forest. They, they want to fight in a cage. Uh, if we have a cage, then the gorilla can't swing nowhere. Yeah, can't climb nowhere. But my thing and the is, bear can't climb anywhere either. So it got to be fight. It's just one that on one bear action. is going to punch the shit out of that gorilla, bro. They punch? It's not I mean, I mean, the gorilla's going to punch the hell out of the bear. They probably like swing like hack um, you no. Know. Like, uh, crazily. Because if the bear topples the, the, Just swing the gorilla, around. the gorilla's not getting up. Think about it. On top of that bear. Bears walk and run on their four legs. When they stand as tall as they can, they're 10 feet. Bears That's for intimidation. Bears don't fight standing up like that. No, they don't. Yeah. But so, you forget, the gorilla doesn't use his mouth to bite. Yes, I mean, it does. Bite. No, not in attacking. We already went through this. Bro. If, if he's fighting a predator, he only uses, he swings. This so if a bear is using his fangs, fucking this gorilla up. Badly, the gorilla is not going to attack back. He's going to keep punching them. You have never seen a gorilla fight in the wild that's not recorded. But this is science, though. This what do you mean this science. is science? This is theories. This is all theoretical. So we're not even. If it doesn't bite, why does it have a bite force of thirteen hundred pounds per square inch? Because it doesn't it's biting, bite. It's biting fucking watermelon. I don't know. At thirteen hundred pounds it's per square inch, are you vegetables. serious? It's not are you serious. It's not a predator. It's what is it a predator to? Huh? What is scared of a gorilla? Other gorillas. Exactly, but that gorilla, what, what, what else? The gorilla. What else? I mean, they, they are. It's an alpha. It's an alpha they thing. They don't fight gorillas. to kill. They don't fight to kill. They so try to get women. A bear is trying to maul you and murder. You forget that bears have claws like nine inches long, sharp as a knife. But does it have a thumb? No. You keep you keep saying this thumb shit, bro. It thumbs. has a thumb. There's a gorilla that technologically advanced to use. Can you teach a bear sign fight. language? Probably. No, the fuck you can't. You can teach it how it doesn't to, have thumbs, so it can't sign. You can teach it. You can teach it how to, uh, how to juggle murder. a ball on his nose. Exactly. So it's various. It's what does that have to do with anything? It's capable of learning. No, a gorilla. I can if sign American, a gorilla. If American wave to you, because they can wave to you. They're trained to wave to you some places. But yeah, you can train a bear to do certain things. Bro, I got the gorilla simply because, you know. Because of thumbs. That's and, all. and gorillas are extremely territorial. And grizzly bears usually only attack for two reasons. Either they're hunting or they're protecting their young. You said bears? Yeah, and bears. Bears are hunting a gorilla. That's all. Nah. I'm giving it to the gorilla. Bear. Like fight. And been. if a bear stands on his 10 foot uh, to show who's an alpha, the gorilla is backing away. Yeah. You don't know that? I know that for sure. Because I'm the size of a gorilla in height. I'm backing up if I see fucking Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> so, so imagine two Shaquille O'Neals. Hey, hey, gorilla. Uh, <laughs> you better get your ass beat. Yeah. yeah. Tell. Barbecue chicken. 24. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, though. Give me like eight months to train. He said 24, rest in peace. <laughs> Give me like eight months to train. Nah, not the gorilla out. Bro, that gorilla is fucking you up. I, like I, I, Donkey I, I, Kong. Give me eight months. What do I got? Are you going to hear me? Do, 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 do. Mike Tyson or a gorilla. Like a Mexican person. Huh? Mike Tyson or a gorilla. Come on. That's not even fair. Mike Tyson or a gorilla. Oh, let, him, let him train. He's going to win. <laughs> Mike Tyson? Yeah. Mike Tyson or a gorilla. He is fucking a gorilla. Bro, that gorilla is going to beat the living hell out yeah, of Mike Tyson. Tyson. All you got to do is punch him one good time. Bro, that gorilla's going to fucked up by Mike. Nah, I am Mike. That's all he needs. Prom. Let's talk about Mike and his prom. Mike and his prom. <laughs> <laughs> he's still getting punched on like a little he's still getting nah, punched on I'm one sorry. punch if he did he can dodge those punches those punches probably real productive. But a gorilla will grab you and just punch on your back and break your spine though. you haven't seen that I have seen that 